Welcome back to Egypt Old Kingdom. Thank you all for your patience. It's been quite a while as we took a longer than expected detour talking about everything dealing with the Great Pyramids themselves and that deep dive. And in the game itself, we of course have just finished that. We're at the late periods now of the Fourth Dynasty. We're looking forward to the Fifth Dynasty. We've got a lot going on and we're just going to recap that real quick here. We are trying to get some of the final tribes on our side. We've got the Owl people here working on improving relations there. We're trying to assimilate the Scorpion people. We have the Nut people down here who don't like us, and we've still got a taboo there. But we are working on improving relations with the Wheat people here. It's going to take a while. And then down in this area, we're going to pretty much never get on the good side of the Vulture people. That's probably the only one, though. So we want to focus at this point as we've got administration work here going and clearing some sand and all of that. Focus on our luxuries and also on favor, which it isn't immediately obvious why, but look at the big ancestral duty we've got hitting in a few turns. There's going to be accelerating, dangerous ancestral duties coming our way, and we're going to want to do as much as we can to combat that, increase our favor income. So there are some deployments we can do with the people we have. We can add another worker. I'm going to come in here now really nice luxuries here obviously that's great but this expedition not the best if we actually there we go look at the numbers I want to have a little bit better expeditions than that but this one down here is a little bit better even though the income part is not great so let's go ahead and bring all of you in if we can and then this is an even better area for that it's got the almost five coming in and then a superior expedition there. Then going into Memphis, we're going to work on the favor side. I want to get a bunch of cemeteries going up on the highlands ground here. So we're going to clear out this sand, first of all. And then we'll clear out these acacias. And we'll add more workers in here as we're able. I want to add some more workers. Not a ton more, but some. We are still working on a couple of more animal situations. We've got the antelopes here. And then the birds down here still continuing to come our way. On the technology side, our culture, we could do some of the lower end items, but we do still have a couple of higher end ones all the way up at the top, which are going to require 5,000 each. So we're saving up for those. And then I am going to hit Osiris a little bit more here. There we go. Blessing of Ptah. And I should mention, there are some bugs that are creeping into the game. I think it's just happened how long the save has been going over multiple versions. All the more reason to finish it up. But for example, Ptah here. We've got these two over here. Remaining negative one. And then after we click on it, they're just gone. So that plus some of the expedition notifications we will discover are not going where they should be at all. But we have cleared out the sand, so we can move on to our next bit here. And we are going to continue investing in the new upcoming resource, the X symbol there. Whenever we can increase that decentralization, we're going to do that. Ghana, okay, you're completed. And this trip to Mali won't be finished until almost the end of the game. But I'm going to stick with it regardless. And we definitely want to then... I'm going to hit Osiris one more time, and that's probably going to be it for quite some while. And then we will do re-upping with Ptah as well. Okay, we've ended the Blessing of Hoppy. And we dug a well here. So those resources are looking pretty good. And I think that's worth investing in. So this territory finished. Let's go ahead and colonize there and see what they have to say. This one's finished as well. I don't think I necessarily want to do anything there at the moment. Wheat people. Okay, you're moving along. I want to re-up with Hoppy. We're definitely going to need that food. Grab another worker. And then we can jump down in here. And now we've got some more workers to use 
in our cemetery project. So let's get some more of these built up. And onward. Scorpion people have joined us. Excellent. We can get another worker. Not a whole lot going on here, but we will need to re-up with Seeker. Okay, so the scorpions are up here. And we've got a couple areas to clear, but we're definitely at least going to want to get this favor. Let's clear out that sand. And clear out this well as well and see if there's anything going on up there that's going to be of interest. Okay, we finished exploring the entire map. We're going to get a 335 bonus to our culture for that. And then they're going to tell us more about Stonehenge, which we have already discussed multiple times on the channel. Neolithic era, an astounding construction from huge stones created in the British Isles. Stones were put in such a way that sunlight passed through them during the summer and winter solstices. People who created this marvel, marvel were able to honor the sun and their ancestors. Maybe. Or maybe it was for some other purpose. We don't really know. Boost another worker there. And here's our big ancestral duty. Knocking us down to... <laughs> I don't like that number. I want a higher number. New territory explored. We explored Mesopotamia. So we'll be looking to go out to Armenia. and be up to turn 290 by the time we finish that. And the timeline ends at 300. Sand has been cleared, so another cemetery. Cemetery finished. And then another cemetery finished here. Okay, we have some more technology to look at. So, do we want to get Genesis of Private Property? Four production and one luxury. I'm going up here for the plus five decentralization. Feudalization. And I'm not going to get into this too much because this is actually the subject matter for the game's next trial, 15 turns on down the road. So we're a bit ahead of the game here, but decline of royal power made it necessary for people to adapt to a new reality. Nomarchs yesterday are now considered independent kings. That's probably an exaggeration, but again, this is a controversial period in terms of what actually happened to what degree. A state economy was replaced by subsistence farming, state cults were forgotten, and the people tried to endure this the best they could. All right. So, they're obviously not feeling too favorable towards the reduction of state power, at least in that summary. And that's probably the general consensus anyway. We'll get into more of that later. We do not have any more cults that we need to address at the moment. Seth is still up. And where do we want our workers to go is really the question at this point. I think I want to have one out here working on... I just want to start clearing out some of these wells and seeing if there's anything useful I can do in those areas. It's sort of just like a busy work period where I'm just trying to clean up messes, basically. Blooming of the Savannah. We will take it. Abundant rains. I mean, I can probably get away with, you know, not boosting Hoppy for a while. And then, you know, save up some favor that way. So, very nice. That's a very pleasant gift to us. Okay, we're finished here. Do we want to go with this? We do. Another nice expedition. And we're going to go to the land that bears stone. Except we're not. Because... <laughs> These are not working. Budo? Nope. You're not taking me there either. So that's one of the broken little bugs. And this is where Budo is. The land that bears stone? I don't remember exactly where. I was looking for the... Yep, this is probably it. And borderline, but I'm going to keep you on. I want to keep the luxuries rolling in. I also want to get one more worker, I think. And I'm going to stand pat on that. Let's have another worker come in down here into Memphis... And, you know, get some additional work done. And then I'm going to try to be saving up the food at this juncture. Mm -hmm. 
more cemeteries up. And some other items. Well, the land of broken pots gave us nothing. Fifth dynasty comes to power. Interesting description they have here. This dynasty will become famous for tracing its lineage to the sons of the god Ra. They built sun temples in the name of Ra. All true. They've lost interest in building huge pyramids. Well, maybe they lost interest. Probably. Yeah, that's borderline. The power of Egypt peaked during their rule. Nonsense. So far as I know, it's virtually a universal conclusion among Egyptologists that the power of Egypt peaked during the 4th dynasty when the Great Pyramids were built. And that there was either, you know, climactic issues, maybe the economy wasn't as prosperous, maybe they had more conflict, internal, external, we're not really sure. There's a lot of debate over why things seem to have declined in the 5th dynasty. But this idea that 5th dynasty, you know, the power is peaking then, I mean, to me, that just comes out of nowhere. So... I'm calling that hogwash. But we get a culture boost. Royal buildings, small tombs are allowed, and the colossal size bonus has been reduced, so we definitely don't want to build colossal size ones. And yes, of course, build us some tombs, etc., etc. Plus 10 favor for each one we finish, and 19 turns to build 9 of them. They work on 3 turns each. Well, that math doesn't work out. So we are once again going to have to regularly accelerate construction, or this is not happening. We'll just do the default speed to begin with. And if we look at the customization, we can see it's a pyramid. It's of a healthy size. You know, it's got white limestone. It's It's got the internal burial chamber. So these are not terrible. They're just not massive like the previous ones were. So that's done. The nearby ways of Horus. Nope. You took me to the land of broken pots. And this one I'm going to cancel because I don't think that's a lucrative enough production one to spend the food doing. I We've got plenty of production for now, so we'll just cancel that. This is the nearby ways of Horus. And you know what? We're going to cancel you as well. So get some more of that food in. And if you're wondering about that, trust me, we're going to need it. And our production is fine. So the more lucrative production expeditions are going to be fine for us. We don't need to do them all. So we have our cemetery here and our cemetery here. So I think we're pretty much done with that. We've got everything there that we can really do. And we can domesticate these birds. So let's definitely do that. Be able to get some more food eventually by clearing out that thicket. Okay, and I think, you know, we're going to wait a little bit on Hoppy. I would kind of like to upgrade Osiris one more time. I don't think we can, though. I don't think I can really afford it, so I will hold off on that. Vulture people want to attack us. They're wimpy compared to us. Let them. I don't care. Children of Ra reforms. Okay, here is decentralization. The fourth dynasty came to an end under mysterious circumstances. True. With the gods punishing kings for their excessive wastefulness, King Userkaf has commenced massive reforms. Uh, maybe. Um, probably not, actually. From now on, kings should be more modest, honor their father Ra, and love their subjects. And again, it may just have been a reaction to the economy, or whatever. Uh, 20 culture every turn. We'll take that boost and decentralization has been unlocked now there's some Userkov probably around for about seven eight years as ruler there's a lot of questions regarding his origin and how he came to power we don't really know much of that could have been elderly uh, could have been somebody who spent most of his life as a high priest of Ra and that's where the focus on Ra comes from we just don't really know so we get some bonuses as a result of the era of decentralization a free expedition chance, 2.6% based on the amount that we have. And no marks acquired the right to send industrial expeditions of their own accord, increasing the influence of resources into state coffers. And also remote battle penalty decrease, which we're not going to care about because we're not going to go off and do any more fighting. We're past that, but hey, it's nice to have it. Reduced by 6.5%. 
and we have the improvements panel available. We'll get to that, and we have this whole tutorial on it. Let's clean up the rest of our items first, then we'll talk some more about decentralization. Okay, you're done there. So let's move off to somewhere else that we need a well dealt with. I think over here is probably going to be that spot. We've ended the Blessing of Ptah. We've got our administration finished here. And, okay, we're just getting basically more culture out of that. Very good. And we also got that slight bit of decentralization added. Okay, I think that's about all we're going to want to do for the moment. Except for, of course, re-upping with Ptah. Let's make sure we don't forget, though, that we have things to do in here because we want to accelerate this and finish this next turn. We don't want to fall behind schedule on that. Okay, decentralization tutorial. Level of independence of Egyptian provinces. The more freedoms they obtain, the cheaper it is to develop them at higher levels. No marks will be able to perform actions independently and help the capital res with resources. Now, in game terms... This is simply going to increase those bonuses we talked about. But then the improvement panel, this six items here, it's not these, because these are the Pata worship options that we have had all game long. So, we have the option to improve managerial techniques. Put in luxuries and get more culture out. We're doing fine on culture, but if you're behind on culture at this point in the game, maybe you want to do that. I don't really want to boost my barracks either. Our military is fine, but... We could do that here with an investment of production. So we're able to shift resources from one sector of the economy to help another one. It's basically what we're doing here. Upgrade farmsteads. There we're going to invest production to increase our food income. We probably will do that at some point. Upgrade workshops. Um, I like the plus 10% expedition productivity. I don't like the plus 10% cost. I think that makes it not worth it. And then upgrade regions, small decentralization increase, plus 1% taxes for 100 food. If I find that we have enough, I'll probably go for that. This is the big one as far as I'm concerned. Upgrade cults. 10% increase in the effect and also the upkeep of tombs, cemeteries, and temples. Got to be careful how much we do this. 0.2% Osiris cult. You can see the 200 luxuries. That's an expensive price, but I'm going to pay it starting right away. Because if we look at our 26 plus that we've got on our favor, we hit this, boom, we're up to 40. I mean, that's that's a big enough gain that I think it's worth doing. And we have to be careful that we don't throw away too many luxuries that way. But I think I'm going to need the favor. So that's why I'm headed in that direction. Okay, so I think we do have... Yes, we have our three cults up, and we're ready to proceed further. There's our tomb for Userkaf. Very nice. Okay. Userkov understood that by completely abandoning the pyramid cult, he would weaken royal power, so he resumed pyramid building. Again, we don't know for sure that they ever completely stopped intentionally, so whatever. But on a much more modest scale, erect his pyramid in Saqqara near the east wall of Djoser's complex to emphasize a link with an ancient tradition of pyramid building. At least in the location, that's absolutely correct. And it was kind of strange where it was built, because they had to put the mortuary temple to the south of his pyramid, which is not where they usually would have put it. So that's a bit of an interesting little side note. And yeah, you're not ready yet. You just finished all of that. We need to go with our next project, which is the Sun Temple of Userkaf. So we're going to build his Temple to Ra, which we can't show you because all that's left is the very bits of the foundation. They just kind of guess at what it might have looked like. So that's not something we can really get into a lot of. We still have the blooming of the savannah. So I could wait. I am going to wait a little bit, I think, until that goes to re-up with Hoppy. Our food is close enough. 
Yep, that's not where the land of Viabet is. It'll be around here somewhere, though. There it is. We'll keep right on going. And this one I'm going to cancel. Because this would not finish until turn 294. So that's going to be too late for us to even care. Plus, there's a good expedition to be had here. So let's grab more luxuries. We can peacefully assimilate the owl people. We will most definitely do so. And we have colonized out here where we don't really care what's going on there. Okay, we'll pull you out. Drain the swamp. So we can get rid of the papyrus as our next task. And I think we need another well hunter sort of out in this area. So you can work on all of that. Keep on clearing those areas. And... I think I'm going to stick with that at this point. Okay, we have improved administration out here. Very good. Nope. Gonna leave that one alone. Not worth it. Favor of Seeker. And I could be wrong. Hope I'm not. I'm gonna hit Osiris one more time in here. Just get that little bit extra bonus. There's our well. Nothing useful there. Keep right on moving. Probably nothing useful here either in the wadi, but whatever. We'll try it. Thickets. You're done there. Build some more farmland if you would please. Not quite enough for our next advance. And... Let's keep right on rolling. Okay, the Royal Annals of the Old Kingdom. The Palermo Stone is the most ancient chronicle of Egyptian kings and the first five dynasties. A very important historical and chronological source for the Old Kingdom. The most important events of each year, such as religious festivals, tax collection, construction of temples, were recorded in it, as well as Nile inundation heights. All of that is correct. The Palermo Stone is one of seven fragments and part of that royal annals. And it's called the Palermo Stone because it's in Italy. It's not actually where it was found, of course. We don't know exactly where it was found. We don't know the provenance, who had it, when. There's a lot of questions about it. It conflicts, as most of the king's lists do, with each other. But we don't even know if it's original or a copy and therefore how reliable it is. So there's a lot of grasping at straws and depending on the Palermo Stone, but it's got a lot of information that we don't have information on from other sources. So it's a question, do you take an imperfect source or do you take no source at all? You're going to take the imperfect source. But for example, one of the clues that we have to the end of the fourth dynasty is that there's an indication on the Palermo Stone that they were planning on building a pyramid for the final Pharaoh of the 4th Dynasty, Shepsis Kath, who only ended up having a Mastaba, but that's why we think, well, they started it, and they just made it a Mastaba because he died earlier than they expected, or whatever. And again, that's just piecing together really small bits of evidence to guess at what we think is the best conclusion. It's really no more than that. Blooming of the Savannah has ended, so we are going back up with Hoppy. And yeah, this is getting fairly low. We are going to need to hit this again. The lands of the mistress. Yep, that's not here, but we're going to keep right on going with all of those. Sand has been cleared. And so we're just going to keep on here and we will take that favor. Thank you very much. Thicket has been cut. Over here, okay, so that's really going to add some food to us once we get that farm up and rolling. Still not quite there on our culture, but we're almost to the 5,000. And this is an unavoidable event. Uh, inefficiency, population and riches continue to grow, but there's no necessity to spend resources on building gigantic pyramids, so there's no place to put all the surplus produce. Yeah, again, 
this is just, I think it's a historic. Um, but despite new reforms, resource distribution and efficiency grows, and we get more spoilage. And maybe, but it's speculative. We have finished the Sun Temple of Userkov, and I think I forgot to accelerate construction there, so if, yes, I did, so shame on me. Sun Temples were important centers of sacrifice distribution, blah, 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 all of Earth belongs to Ra, and only just because of Ra, who grants a part of Earth's gift to his children. Kings give these gifts to their subjects, and bountiful sacrifices to Ra were indeed made there for centuries. All for the prosperity of Egypt. This is definitely the high point of the cult of Ra in Egyptian history. And there is a lot of indication that there was more artistic and more intricate decoration of not just the Ra temples, but also the mortuary temples for the pharaohs at this time. So it's like they shifted their efforts from building the larger pyramids to building more modest pyramids, relatively speaking, and then... You know, more efforts going towards the temples themselves as the culture evolved. Wells are dug. Yeah, we don't need you there. Grain fields finished. You can move on. And the antelopes are up to good. Okay. So we need another well to contend with if we have any over here. Are there more? Well, we've got one turn we'll be able to go into there. And you're going to attack wherever this is. Yeah, there's a well there. So whatever. We'll come into this direction. And this needs to be built. We'll actually just keep it as it is. The Tomb of Sahura, short-lived successor to Userkoth. But We now can actually grab Genesis of Private Property. So, uh, chaotic changes overturned Egypt's social structure. Former paupers became rich. Previously affluent nobles lost everything. And essentially, personal private property is no longer considered a gift from gods or kings, but considered by the people at large. Possessions to be justly acquired. This is not to say that we're turning this economy into, you know, capitalism. But it's definitely moving more in that direction. And let's see... All of this is good. We are just going to continue on. All right. Yeah, we're going to fight. We're going to win easily. What do you think about that? First battle we've had in quite some time. And away we go. Okay, that has been finished. We can now peacefully assimilate the wheat people. Let's do so. More expeditions successful. You actually took me to the right place this time. I'm so impressed. Wells dug. We shouldn't need you there. And you're finished as well. We've got some free labor. Grain fields completed here, but we're going to leave you exactly where you are, and we don't want you over there. We actually, actually, we want you to be building a field there is what we want. And I think at this point, we're going to leave off at this stage, and the run-up into the seventh trial will continue next time. But thanks for watching, everybody. We are progressing gradually and gradually, about 40 turns left in Egypt Old Kingdom, the story of the Old Kingdom's final days will continue soon.